Hey guys, and welcome back to more Daymare 1998. When we last left off, uh, we were exploring the wonderful city that is... What do they call it again? Keen Sight, yes. Ah. I can't remember the last time I saw this court so empty. Well, I mean, it's not... used to practice out here religiously. It's not exactly empty now, my dude, is it? So, I thought I wasn't going to get a lot of time to record, but uh, I can sneak in a quick, cheeky couple of videos after work, which is the best way of doing things. Come on, you brain-munching fuckers. There we go. Got the cure for ails you. Lovely. Beautiful. I think there's some Easter eggs around here. It's actually, from what I can remember, quite a few Easter eggs. So, let's have a little look. Help shark. This too shall pass. Hey, we're in Raccoon. We're in Raccoon Alley. Eh? Alright. Nice to know. Keen sight. Let's have a little scooch around here, shall we? V Jolt is the key. I believe. No, you can't search V Jolt is the key. Be afraid. Be very afraid. What a place for the uh, canister to land. Status? Danger. Alright, thank you. Thanks for the warning. Well, that doesn't look great. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't look great at all. Hmm, okay. Well, let's keep exploring. See what we can find. D and D. Dutch and Dylan gun shop. Yep, we're basically going to totally not Kendo, Kendo's gun shop. Well, not sure which one that is, Dutch or Dylan. Wow, look at this bloody size of that register. Jesus. Well, let's take the shotgun shells. Ten shotgun shells. Don't mind if I do. Nice. Damn it, Joe. You were a good friend. I wish I could have. <sighs> also, it's worth knowing, noting this with me. There's a lot of ammo and stuff here that we just can't take. Kind of like in Resident Evil uh, 2, to be fair. Um, what else we got here? Lots of empty gun cases. Got some more. Oh, inventory is full. That's no good. That's no good at all. Uh, well, we can combine those two things. What is our health like? 64. Right, we'll leak that as well then. Um, hmm. So we've got a shotgun now. Which is fun, because the shotgun is amazing. And we've got a note here as well. It's tough for me to write anything down, especially when I know it's going to be the last thing I'll ever write. In truth, I didn't have much to say, nor any family to leave this to. My life has been filled with a single purpose, a great passion for firearms. It allowed me to build an empire. And I want to share that passion with anybody who reads this. 30 long years have passed since my partner, Robert Dillon, and I opened our first shop in town. Then a second, third, and many more. It's kind of interesting. Now, you wouldn't have thought a town this big would have been that, need that many gun shops. Well, it's America, isn't it? I suppose gun shop on every street corner. Um, handing them out like candy. Uh, especially close to schools, as I understand uh, then a second and third, many more. In short, D&D &D Firearms has become a symbol of reliability and perfection. I found myself getting to know every hunter, fisherman and gun enthusiast in keen sight. And it's made me very happy. If it's got a trigger, you can get one here has been our motto since the day we opened our first tiny shop on Hudson Street. How much I miss those days. Every gun was like a child of mine. Yes, guns. I've always thought a loaded gun will solve any problem. 
how, how American of you, sir. But nowadays, I'm not too sure. Today, I gave them all away to citizens who came here begging for protection from those creepy as hell monsters. Only later did I realise that the damn things are really just the customers I've been serving for the past 30 years. I've been shut in here for hours now, trying like hell to avoid them. Yet they still torment me. I can hear them, even now, outside the shop and inside my head. I just want them to stop screaming and leave me the fuck alone. My last prayers go to you and your family, Rob. I'll leave our sign on for one more day. A beacon of hope for those still seeking a safe place to hide. And for anyone who finds this note, I leave my shotgun to you. As usual, D&D &D is open for business. As for me, I'm done pulling the trigger. I won't take any more lives. Not even my own. I'd much, uh, I'd much rather be fin uh, fishing up at Bear River anyhow. Farewell. I actually quite like that note. That's really, really cool. So, we have a puzzle here. Now, if I remember correctly. Boop. Boop. And what does this puzzle remind us of? Hmm. I wonder. Anyway, that's going to turn the water off. The horrible, sparky water that we had. Now, if we remember from... Alright, he literally spawned up here, apparently. Uh, <laughs> when I played this before, he spawned down there. It's kind of interesting. By kind of interesting, I mean a little bit bogus. He's having a... Oh! He instantly knows we're here. That's fine. That's fine. Right, come on then, you melted fuck. Let's be having yet. Good thing we have this shotgun. There we go. Ooh. Got hit with a splash there. Got stuck on the bike. Alright. So, that melty bastard is gone. Yeah, so we read a log earlier about those melty guys apparently react violently with water so <coughs> I thought they were going to go somewhere with that but um, you know I guess not as far as I know you can't lead them into the water or any BS like that so what do we have here uh, nope remember how this works So we've got the Polybus, which was that famed, um, like, computer game that apparently, like, you know, made people die or something. There was a whole creepy pastor about the Polybus, <clears throat> from what I can remember. Um, we have Nina, Warrior Queen, <laughs> instead of Xena, Xenia, Warrior Princess, and Xeno instead of Alien, I guess? That's cool. That's cool. I don't know why we've got like one perfectly fine dartboard here and then we have another um, dartboard that's like burnt or something. Partial recall. <laughs> Alright, partial recall. That's fine. Is that? Oh, it's similar to Coca-Cola. Similar writing, but just far enough away from coca-cola so you know nobody's gonna get sued Ooh, shall have you hello love I remembered you I don't know where you come from whoa she's a twitcher they're all twitches in this game and it's all the better for it to be honest Okay, so, any other goodies in here? Doesn't look like it. Oh, hello. Alright, she's not done yet, I guess. She is now. <laughs> 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 yep, 
Yeah, she's aight. She... <coughs> One of the good ones she is. Oh, an energy drink. Don't mind if I do. Actually... <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. Uh, energy drink. Can we mix out of anything? I don't think so. That's a shame. Hopefully we can get that mixed up with something a little bit later on. Now... There is another secret room down here that's actually quite secret, to be honest with you. Oh, we can hear the MacGyver going. It's the Blind Sight, an underground paper spread throughout the suburbs of Keensight. This issue is titled Naomi Never Gone. It goes into detail about the experiments conducted by the government on American cities in the mid-1940s. Yeah, we find out a little bit more about the Naomi project. At, oh, cool. At one point, I think, which Project Naomi was basically um, in this game, it took over from the MK Ultra uh, experiments. Which, you know, it's a fairly decent angle, to be honest. Right, let's get that used up because it's kind of useless. Let's get some more bullets in that magazine, I suppose. Don't like having two magazines, but. I guess it's fine. Inventory is full. Ugh. Right, what can we drop? Uh, let's drop... God damn it. Do we really need two magazines? Pretty sure we don't. Um, let's drop the cable. I'm going to grab you. And then we're going to mix up this energy drink into that. And I suppose we'll just take the cable back, I guess. No reason not to. Uh, and that, I think that's all that's in here. Oh, there was also a thing to shoot in here as well. One of those, like, bobblehead things. But um, apparently, once you got them, you got them. They don't come back. Which is fine. I don't mind it when games do that. Not really. Ah. Look at this gentleman in here. I never noticed that before. Don't actually think we can get in there. Or maybe we can. Oh. Ah, right. Yes, I did have my tablet set up for this, didn't I? Um, right, so what we want. Oh, for. Ah. Ion Keen Sight 2. Hey, it's a Bible. So, gold! This is what the men of Colonel Crackhorn have shouted, coming across almost by chance in the vein of the precious metal. In the vein of. Okay. Precious metal concealed beneath the winding river. Not certain industrial quantities, but enough to build something big and solid. Determined to exploit the fortune that happened and now certain to have been found in a place to live in peace. What the? Who the fuck wrote this? This is so bad. Determined to exploit the fortune that happened and now certain to have been found uh, a place to live in peace and difficult to find by the Allied troops, Colonel Crackhorn established a base camp on the spot, renamed Fort Vermilion in honour of those cautious red colour, the curious red colour of the local trees during the winter. Over time, the entire forest was called Vermilion Forest. While the mountains that protected the area were renamed Redcrest Mountains, part of the Lost River Mountain Complex, you cannot say that red is not the emblem of our beloved keen sight. In short, instead, it was the will of Colonel Crackhorn himself to give the name to the Golden River, called Bear River in memory of the extermination to which he decided not to take part in, and memory of the many Indians killed so brutally by his former comrades. And that started the North Idaho. And that's starting... Oh, from the north, Idaho. Uh, on the border with Canada descends 
to the south regularly until it flows into the Snake River. With the end of the Civil War and the passing of the years, despite the uh, exhaustion of the gold vein in 1887, what was once only a fort had turned into a small rural and autonomous community. Under the guidance of a now dying Colonel Crackhorn, took the name Keen Sight. In the early years, the 900 are be- oh, of the 1900s, our beloved town grew to reach more than 2,000 inhabitants, welcoming the inhabitants of numerous small neighbouring yeah neighbouring communities, otherwise destined to disappear, isolated, uh, came to life like a profitable hunting. Oh, like profitable hunting and fishing market. This this is so. The sentences are so disjointed here. I'm going to give this the benefit of the doubt, and I'm going to assume this is just whoever copied it into this text log has just not done it properly. It couldn't have been written like this. Uh, otherwise, destined to disappear, isolated, came to life a profitable hunting and fishing market with a extension that from the Bear River rose to the mountains of the Canadian border. Note of some importance, in 1914, the Mayor George F. Hudson, an engineer who had reached Keene Sight almost by chance, working as a young man at one of the first urban electrical installations in the nation, established the first Apple Blossom Fair. Town summer event celebrating the production of local apples and ciders exported throughout the state. Ah, so they do have a reliance on local ciders. I like it. I like cider. I drank way too much cider at the weekend, actually. <clears throat> Made myself quite quite ill. Not actually physically ill. Snake Pliskin escaped from here. Did he now? Um, but yeah, God, feeling a bit rough. Hello. I remember you. Is your name Snake? What was that film called? Like Escape from LA or something? That was a pretty rad film, to be fair. Ooh. I guess we can kill them as they wake up. I like all these little pots of green her uh, herbs everywhere as well. Nice little touch. 100 notes, movies, and video game rental. Ah. Uh, that was weird. It's the Blind Sight, an underground paper spread throughout the suburbs of Keen Sight. This issue is titled Water is Life, Water is Death. Don't drink it. It goes into detail about uh, experimentations conducted on the drinking water. Yeah, that's kind of like a big thing um, about all the chemicals like governments and whatnot around the world tipping their uh, water supplies. Depends where you live. Um, yeah, depending on how much fluoride is in the water and all that kind of stuff. So we have a pharmacy here. This pharmacy of Dr. G. Big Jaw. Big Jaw. Dr. G. Big John, sounds like a cheap third-rate rapper, is open from 9am to 9pm, or in case of emergency. Alright. Oh, actually... Yeah, I think... Agent T-Ray. Yeah, I think we've got a computer here somewhere. Guess we can't come over there. That kind of looks like the fire hydrant -y area from Resident Evil 3, to be fair. Alright, we'll be back for you in a minute. Uh, application form for a new quantity of M88 pills. Sedative has proven successful at regulating sleep and wakefulness. Anxiety, paranoia, symptoms specific to Daymare Syndrome. M88 pills. All right. Sounds like the sort of pills that our friend Sam Walker probably chows down on. Oh, hello. Who would have thought this is just chilling in the back of the pharmacy? Luckily, we got ourselves a hive. 
Um, now, you know what? Let's drop a magazine down because we just straight up don't need it. We definitely don't need the Action Express. Don't need all of these health items either. Um, drop you. Definitely drop you. Uh, a lot of bullets here, haven't we? Let's drop the high-end bullets because if we need to fight anything powerful, we've got the got the shotgun uh, gonna drop another healing item because we just don't need them so agent T-Ray uh, in case help doesn't arrive in time I'm leaving this report for the company as a record of what happened and as a warning to fellow operatives who stumble across frost and I on company orders we came to this pharmacy on Hudson Street to recover research data and subsequently destroy evidence of it okay including the guinea pigs but as soon as we stepped across the threshold we found that one of the specimens had escaped from its capsule it didn't look threatening nor aggressive in fact it seemed rather stunned but as soon as i grabbed at the human experiment it struck me in the ribs harder than i thought possible and escaped through the window when frost opened fire i sent through the window when frost opened fire i sent frost to chase after it and i stayed behind to request medical aid but given the current situation i doubt they'll be here anytime soon that thing smashed me up real good and it feels like i'm bleeding inside hurts just to breathe i don't know how long i can hold out but i hope frost doesn't get tenderized too well i'm pretty sure frost is probably dead just saying let's drop a save and back the F out. Yeah, not, not like much here, really. You can see one of the experiments has escaped there. These guys just look like normal standard zombies. Yeah, because they're wearing pants. So, not sure what exactly is going on with that. We'll grab you just because. Uh, should we chuck that back in the box? Uh, oh... It's just, yeah, it's just a stamina thing. Um, yeah, let's just go throw that back in the box. Like, stamina boosting items in this game just aren't useful at all. Like, they don't really have a purpose. I think they just wanted to put an extra item into the game uh, without actually, you know, bothering uh, to, to, you know, implement an actual need for them. I mean, maybe on the hardest difficulty, they're a thing. Not sure. Anywho. Ooh. An article by the familiar tribute about the Kuranusu Enterprise, a powerful Japanese pharmaceutical giant that produces more than 50% of the world's drugs. The company was apparently founded by individuals suspected of having connections to the infamous wartime unit 74. Interesting. I don't think I, I read that last time. All right, so that's to the park. Someone's having a bad time down here. Hello. Oh, that was my fault completely. Get off me, bitch. Come on. She's had enough, I think. No feet. Is that a Terminator reference? No fate. Got a feeling it probably is. Uh, right, okay. She's fine, she can stay there. Snake Pliskin escaped from here. Yeah, we know he did. Okay, code nine okay okay, not a not a huge one. Ion Keen Sight 3. Unable to be reached by the railway because settled in so many miles of forest. It took decades since the road that connected the town to the few surrounding communities immersed in the Idaho forest via the Hunter Road, completed in September 1912, was comp What the fuck? These are so bad. Right, let's start that again. Unable to be reached by the railway because... There's no punctuation here at all, by the way. 
unable to be reached by the railway because settled in so many miles of forest it took decades since the road that connected the town to the few surrounding communities immersed in the Idaho forest via Hunter Road completed in September 1920 was completed with the spending divided between the US government, the state of Idaho and the community of Keen Sight. Now in need of a way of communication with the outside to increase a trade that now feeds over 10,000 inhabitants and can no longer be supported by only naval displacements along Bear River. It is at the turn of the 30s that Keen Sight lives a short but intense exploit. With the Vermilion Forest that, uh, declared, that is declared a state national park with all the resulting economic and tourist benefits, with the town that is chosen as one of the focal points for the tourism of steamboats that descend and go up the river, offering breathtaking scenery to tourists and to the magnet of these services, such Stuart T. Ullman, who fall, who fall in love with them. Shouldn't it be who falls in love with them? Who fall in love with them and who will also decide to create his extravagant villa and branch of the company in, in city. In the city, surely. Uh, and as a commercial naval junction, due to its strategic position for river trade between Canada and the northern United States. With its 17,000 inhabitants in a few years, Keensight is awarded as the second largest city of America under the 25,000 inhabitants with the highest standard of living in the nation. All right. Well, that was, that was a load of words. I'm wondering if they actually left these uh, logs out because they were just, they weren't really proofread or anything. <laughs> Now, anyone who's played Resident Evil 3 will remember this little area. It's basically verbatim taken straight out of Resident Evil 3. Right, I'll have me shotgun shells. Sorry, love. There we go. And look. If you search that, you get an achievement. That's the V-Jolt recipe. Which I thought was quite cool. F for sale, for lease. Build to suit. Halloween party, 1998. Masquerade. Rock and roll. The master of your wishes. Clinton Gore. Do not lock bikes... Do not lock bikes to fans. I guess I'm supposed to say fence. I'm not sure. All right. Well, above my pay grade. I am not a translator. Let's keep going. There's some way you can search that makes him uh, mention green herbs. But I'm not sure where. Nice. Get some more bullets. Get some. Again, are you mixed beta? Boss is das. Okay. So it's health fluid and stamina fluid in one shot. Alright, we'll take it. We will certainly be taking it. Alright, let's go back go and explore the park. The park that we've heard a little bit about. The park that has a incredibly broken puzzle, actually. Evening! Let's try and get some rounds on target. Whoa. He squiffed out. I'm not buying it. I don't think this fella's dead at all. I uh, could be wrong. I don't know. He might be dead. Okay.
It's a melted man. Ooh, we've got a melted man. A zombie. Now, unfortunately, with the shotgun, you can't actually unload it. Ah, we've aggroed this guy. Excellent. Come on, you ugly, skinless fucker. That's right. Yeah, we're not that afraid of you, to be honest. Right, you're dead. Should be dead. Well, I mean, he's losing a lot of blood. Eh, he's probably dead. Right, now, Mr. Melty Boy. Oh, it's stuck. Come on, you melty bastard. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Evasive maneuvers. We missed the evasive maneuvers. Right. Let's quickly get around that. Yeah, they're pretty durable, to be fair. And they can also shoot round corners. <clears throat> Which is something that we do need to be slightly careful of. Alright, Raven. You're fine. Right, let's load that shotty up. Let's reload you. And I guess... Do we just have a normal? Yeah, we just got a normal. So we'll just use that. And what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to go back to the pharmacy and save it. Because we're on half an hour. And we've got a bit of a puzzle to deal with now. Now, the puzzle itself is kind of okay, but it it bugged out on me when I actually did it um, first time through. So, we're going to give it a go, see what happens, and I will meet you guys there in the next part. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, till next time.